from our Chicago studios. This is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Samana Siddiqui. Our top story tonight. Staff at a museum in Queens, New York, are protesting the institution's ban on the kafiye, a traditional Palestinian scarf. At least 14 employees of the Noguchi Museum say the policy prohibiting political dress discriminates against Palestinians and undermines the legacy of American artist Isamu Noguchi, who was committed to humanitarian causes. They say the ban disregards cultural expression and inclusivity. The dispute began when someone visiting the gallery was sent home for wearing a kefiye. This led to the broader ban. The protesting employees are calling for the ban's reversal to preserve the museum's integrity and diversity. Israeli military operations across Gaza have intensified, killing many more Palestinians. Early Tuesday, strikes in Deir al-Balah and Khan Yunus left at least 20 Palestinians dead. The last 24 hours witnessed the killings of 41 people in three separate attacks, injuring 113, as reported by the Palestinian Health Ministry. Further strikes killed three individuals in Gaza City's Zaytou neighborhood and a woman in the Al-Mudassar area of Deir al-Balah. Israeli forces claim to have rescued 52-year-old prisoner Qaid Farhan al-Qadi, who is now reported to be in stable health. The Palestinian Prisoner Society says Israel continues to withhold the bodies of at least 552 Palestinians, including 149 killed during the continuing war. The director of Kamal Adwan Hospital in Beit Lahia says Israel is denying the medical sector fuel and aims for its destruction. Compounding the crisis, the UN has halted its aid operations in Gaza due to a mass evacuation order in Deir al-Balah, significantly disrupting humanitarian efforts. Meanwhile, tensions are escalating in the West Bank, where recent conflicts have resulted in six more Palestinian deaths. Israel has killed at least 40,476 Palestinians and wounded 93,647 in its war on Gaza. The British medical journal The Lancet, however, reports that Israeli actions may have killed at least 186,000 Palestinians in the last 10 months. Israel faces accusations of genocide at the International Court of Justice. As many as 50 major donors have funneled a staggering $1.5 billion into the 2024 federal elections, the Washington Post reports. Most of the money has been channeled into super political action committees, known as PACs, which can accept unlimited donations despite laws against direct coordination with campaigns. Prominent figures like Timothy Mellon, who donated $165 million, and Kenneth Griffin, with $75.7 million, dominate the list. Critics argued that this influx of cash undermines democracy, pointing out that it skews political influence towards the wealthy elite. Calls for campaign finance reform are intensifying as super PAC spending skyrockets, highlighting growing concerns over the fairness of the electoral process. Senator Bernie Sanders spoke out about the need for a better campaign finance system in a speech at the Democratic National Convention last week. He said billionaires in both parties should not be able to buy elections, including primary elections. More than 200 former Republicans are endorsing Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris. The group is made up of alumni from George W. Bush, John McCain, and Mitt Romney's campaigns. It has released an open letter published in USA Today warning that a second term for Donald Trump would be disastrous for the United States. The letter highlights their concerns about Trump's leadership as well as a potential threat to democracy, saying the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol was a pivotal moment. The GOP alumni are urging moderate Republicans and independents to vote for Harris and Tim Walz in November, urging fellow party members to put country far before party and oppose Trump's potential policies, as well as foreign alliances. Trump's stance on abortion ban sparks debate. Details after the break, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Republican vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance has announced that if re-elected president, Donald Trump would veto any federal abortion ban supporting individual states' rights to decide. 
The statement comes amid backlash from the Democratic Convention in Chicago last week, which criticized Trump's role in appointing judges who overturned federal abortion rights in the U.S. Trump initially supported a 15-week abortion ban, but later said decisions should be left to states. Vance's comments received criticism from conservative and anti-abortion groups. The Supreme Court's 2022 decision in Dobbs v. Jackson granted states the authority to regulate abortion. It has led to varying restrictions across the country, particularly in the South, prompting President Joe Biden to protect access to abortion and emergency care. Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador has reaffirmed his stance against constructing a border wall, emphasizing that Mexico is a free and independent nation. Speaking at the inauguration of a dam in the city of Mazatlan, alongside President-elect Claudia Scheinbaum, Obrador was indirectly criticizing Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump's promise to build a border wall. Obrador also highlighted the significant economic contributions of Mexican migrants who send an estimated $65 billion annually back to the country. Claudia Scheinbaum, who won the presidential election in Mexico on June 2nd, is set to succeed Obrador on October 1st. The Biden administration will be relaunching its free at-home COVID-19 test program next month. Starting late September, Americans can order four free tests through the website covidtests.gov, which will be delivered directly to their homes. This will be the seventh time in over three years that free tests will be available. The move follows the approval of updated COVID-19 vaccines and comes amid a summer surge of infections. In addition to free tests, the antiviral pill Paxlovid will be available for free for Medicare, Medicaid and uninsured individuals through the end of 2024, with continued assistance programs from Pfizer and Merck for those in need. Director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Mandy Cohen, highlights that while COVID-19 cases are rising, increased immunity from past vaccinations is mitigating severe outcomes. The administration is also recommending annual COVID-19 shots, aligning with flu vaccinations to maintain protection. At least 56 people, including 12 terrorists, were killed in a series of deadly attacks in Pakistan on Monday. In the province of Balochistan, militants ambushed passengers on the Musakhil Road, killing 23 after forcing them off their vehicles. The attackers torched at least 10 cars and targeted buses and trucks. A clash between militants and police in Qalad district claimed 10 lives, while four more bodies were found in Bolan district. Separately, militants seized a police station in the town of Mastung, setting fire to records and vehicles before fleeing. A bomb blast in Bolan district also destroyed a key railway bridge, halting traffic and killing two. In the northwest Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, a remote-controlled bomb in North Waziristan killed four. With no group claiming responsibility, authorities suspect Baloch separatists behind the violence. Pakistan continues to grapple with escalating terrorism, particularly in its mineral-rich but poorest province, Balochistan. The province is also a key route for the $64 billion China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project. That aims to connect China with Balochistan's Gwadar port through a network of roads, railways and pipelines for cargo, oil and gas transportation. A Pakistani court has acquitted a freelance journalist who was accused of spreading false news that incited riots against Muslims in the UK. The court's decision followed a Federal Investigation Authority report clearing Farhan Asif of the charges. Arrested in Lahore last week, Asif was initially blamed for spreading misinformation about a stabbing incident in the town of Southport in the UK, which led to violent protests. The FIA found that Asif had merely shared information from other sources, and he had since apologized and deleted the post. The disinformation, originally from a minor tabloid and circulated by a UK-based individual known for spreading false claims, had triggered nationwide racist violence in the UK, resulting in over 1,000 arrests and nearly 600 charges. At least 60 people were killed and many remain missing as a dam collapsed in eastern Sudan on Monday amid torrential rains. The Sudanese daily al tahrir reports that the Arbat Dam contains a reservoir that is a primary source of fresh water for Port Sudan City. Citing witnesses, their newspaper said floods swept through villages near the dam, crashing into the surrounding mountains and then flowing back into the villages, causing extensive destruction. Hundreds of residents fled to mountain peaks to avoid the danger of the floods, while others remained trapped in villages. The dam was constructed in 2003 to capture rainwater for use during the dry season. However, it has not undergone regular maintenance for several years. Archaeologists have uncovered the ruins of Togu Balik, an ancient Uyghur city dating back approximately 1,400 years in northern Mongolia. This significant find was made during excavations of the Tul River Valley. 
Experts say it provides crucial insights into Uyghur civilization and challenges recent efforts by China to alter Uyghur history. They also say it intensifies ongoing debates about Uyghur history and their cultural heritage while countering claims by Chinese historians who aim to integrate Uyghur identity into a broader Chinese narrative. Lead archaeologist Saban Dogan notes that the discovery not only fills historical gaps, but also deepens understanding of early Uyghur urban life. The ruins are believed to be from the period between 630 and 680 of the Common Era. They were part of the Uyghur Haganate, an influential empire. That's all from our Chicago studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates. Your support is needed now more than ever to continue our mission of providing informative, educational, and inspiring content to Muslims in North America and around the world. Donate now by visiting muslimnetwork.tv slash donate. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Salam and good night.